The momentum balance equation in fluid mechanics helps us compute the force that exerts on fluids as they flow through machines. It's a little intimidating to look at, so let's take a, look, a closer look at a simple case to see what this F-net is about. This is the general equation, and we're looking now at a simplified version of that equation, when there's only one inlet and one outlet. In that case, you have here rho VA times the velocity vector incoming, and rho VA times the velocity vector outgoing. There's a certain sign convention used in here, which is that this V perpendicular, the inlet coming velocity, is negative when it's coming in, and it's positive when it's going out. Yeah? So that now if I take the absolute value of this, so I have a positive number here, I have to put a minus sign in front of the incoming and a positive sign in front of the outgoing here. Yeah? So sum this up here, you have rho times V times A here. This is the mass flow. And so if you have only one inlet and one outlet, this equation sums up to this. The mass flow going through the system, through the control volume that you're looking at, multiplied by vector V2 minus vector V1. So what could this be? What would this look like for some cases in practice? Let's take a look first at a simple case. Um, the case where V2 is in the same direction as V1, yeah, but has different length. The length of V2 is different than the length of V1. And after that, we'll take a look at the case where they have different directions. Yeah? So either they have different lengths or different directions. Let's take a look here at a pipe, a pipe flow. Um, at the outlet of this pipe here is a nozzle, and this nozzle makes it so that the water flow exits as, a, as an empty cone, yeah? just an empty cone out of the pipe. If you squeeze, if you turn around the, the nozzle of this pipe here, uh, then the cone progressively comes together um, until the point, if you turn again this, this, this wheel here, um, until the point where you have now another cone but a cylinder, a shallow, empty, empty cylinder, of water shooting out. And if you do this, then you come to a great deal of force. So you can see these people here are holding the pipe with a lot of effort to try to compensate for the water which is shooting out of this pipe in this hollow cone here, hollow cylinder, um, as it was coming in here much slower inside the pipe. Why is that so? And what is the net force applying in this case? Well, we have a case where we have a control volume we can, which we can cut here around the pipe. Yeah? So the pipe comes in from the left, the water shoots out from the, from the right, and inside we have the pipe and the nozzle, and we don't care about that anymore. All we care about is the incoming velocity and the outgoing velocity. What does the net force look like in this case? Well, V1 is this vector, V2 is the same vector but longer, yeah? this is V2. V2 minus V1 is basically V2 plus minus V1. What does minus V1 look like? You take this vector here and you flip it around yes and then you get minus v1 so if you now you add up v2 and minus v1 you get a vector here which is about half the length of v2 and this would be v2 minus v1 you multiply this by the mass flow now and you get f net so that in this case here you come in with a small velocity at the inlet you get out with a large velocity at the outlet and the net force is v2 minus v1 Yes, multiply by the mass flow, it's forward. A net force somewhere in the pipe um, has pushed the water from a low velocity to a high velocity. Yeah? V2 minus V1 multiplied by mass flow is a net force. What is this net force? Uh, we don't know. In practice, there would be pressure. It could be pressure, shear, or an impeller inside. Um, a, a machine of some kind, we don't know and we don't mind. All we want to quantify is a net force. The net force is pushing forward, yeah? And so because the net force is pushing forward, the fluid is pushing forward, sorry, the fluid is pushed forward, um, there's a reaction force, which is the force of the people holding the water, yes, and those people are pushed backwards, okay? The net force quantifies the force on the fluid, not the force on the person holding the pipe. So let's take a look at another case, a case where um, now the inlet and the outlet velocities may be the same length, but they have different directions. Yeah? This is the nozzle outlet of the, of the jet engine on an F-35 fighter airplane, 
which is kind of cool because you can swivel the, the outlet like this and you can push uh, the air downwards and so lift the aircraft up uh, when you want to take off and land vertically. And so let's take a look at one such case. You have here, in some system of some kind, we don't really know what's inside, you have incoming velocity V1 here and outgoing velocity V2 like so. And these have the same lengths, but they have different directions. Yeah, they're pointing in different directions. What does a net force look like in this case? Well, this is V1, this is V2, same length, different directions. If I take V1, I flip it around, so I get minus V1, and I put it at the end of V2, then I get this, V2, so V2 along here, minus V1. And so the sum of those two vectors would be a vector that goes from that point to this point here, a vector in the diagonal like so. So when you represent this vector, V2 minus V1, multiplied by the mass flow, you get the net force. And the net force is pushing in this direction in this case. So again, this is the force on the fluid, and the force on the holding machine here will be the force in the opposite direction. So it will be slanted downwards like so. The machine is pushing the fluid, and so it is pushed by the fluid in return. So these are the two cases why you would have a net force with one inlet and one outlet.